Maybe you're like me and sometimes you get frustrated when students don't return books to your classroom library. Or maybe it just gets messy and you just need a better way to organize it. I have discovered this awesome new way to organize my classroom library so that my students can be self-sufficient and check out books themselves. It's awesome! Here it is in action. Check it out. Yay! Now I can read with my friends! So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how you can set up your classroom library just like mine so that students can check out books themselves Okay, so the first thing that you do is go to librarything.com. You need to join, become a member, and it's easy to sign up. Um, so I'm already a member, so I'm going to log in. If you already have books in the Library Thing library, then they will appear down here. But I believe that when you start a new account, this is empty. Uh, so all you need to do to add your books is click on Add Books to Your Library and then it will um, bring a search bar so that you can search. So if you want to add a new book, then you search for it and there should be a long list of books that appear with that name. If it's searching Amazon.com then there will be more than just one that pops up. So you pick the one that is closest to the book that you have in your library um, my cover of this one does not match the cover that I have because it's a different edition but I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out what copyright mine is uh, I don't have that kind of time so instead I'm just going to pick the one that is the same book uh, it doesn't matter to me if it's the, a different copyright year I just care more about the title and the author so then you click that and then it adds it to your library and it's as simple as that um, it says here duplicate ISBN in your catalog because I already have it in my catalog it says that I have a duplicate so um, with books like that like this one El Enchanted I have two of those books in my library so it's okay I know that that's a duplicate there's two of them so that's okay with me um, but since I only have one um, since I only have one Gathering Blue um, I'm gonna delete that because it's already in there um, and that's it then you can go to your books and you can see all of the books that you have in your library. Uh, I don't care about tags. You could tag them by genre, you could tag them by any other way that you want, but I don't bother with that because I don't have the time. All I care about is title and author. So what Library Thing does is it catalogs all of your books in your library. So all it does is keep inventory of your books. However, in order to get your students to check out books on your computer next to your classroom library, you need to sign up for an account through LibraryCat. LibraryCat.org It pops up as TinyCat. It's called TinyCat, but the website is LibraryCat.org And you can watch this video if you want. Patrons can explore your collections with ease. You can even allow self-checkouts for more independent circulation. So what you do is you sign up for this and you connect it through your library thing account. There's also a little link right here that you could click on and that goes to um, your account. And once you do that, then you log in and then this is what you see. And you can go to the settings section down here and adjust uh, the details that you want. For example, you can go to patrons and you can add patrons which are the students and you can add uh, who they are by their names and you can see how many they've checked out how many transactions they've made and then I set a little shortcut on my bookmarks list to go to the active transactions so that means whoever has checked out a book so if a student has checked out a book then it will appear here 
So here, this is where Gathering Blue was checked out by Grant. And so what I would do is I would uh, see that he checked it out. And if he returned it, then I would click on this. And let's say he wanted to renew it. He could, I could either click Renew if he wanted to read it for longer. Or I can return it, and then it will disappear from the list. So the other thing is that if it's overdue, if he has had it longer than he should, then it would appear in red here, and it would say overdue and that would alert you that you need to check in with that student and make sure that they are going to return the book so that you don't lose it. This is also really nice to have documentation for the parents and what I have done is I've taken a picture of this it says overdue and I sent it to the parent and they searched at home and they tried to find the book and they couldn't find it so um, I, it's nice to have this documentation to show them that they did indeed check it out and and then they're much more willing to pay for the book uh, to be replaced if they can't find it at home or if the student lost it. Thanks for watching. My biggest joy from this is that the students get to be self-sufficient and it reduces my workload and I can keep track of the books much easier. Thanks so much to Kendra for showing me library thing and uh, telling me about it. It's an awesome resource and I hope everybody else gets to enjoy it as much as I have so far. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to help. Thanks. Talk to you later.